Hi everyone, so today I'm getting into the valuation of Diploma and I'll give you my summary at the end. Let me jump into my screen in a moment, but before I do, this is based in England, so you're gonna need a brokerage account that can give you access to England. Uh, link in the description below for Interactive Brokers, which is the one that I personally use, and if I was to invest in this company, I'd be using Interactive Brokers. So I've got videos here on my channel as well explaining how to uh, use the brokerage platform and how it all looks and things like that. So you can check those out too. All right, let's do the valuation now. So what I've got here is I've put in the revenue number for Diploma at the moment, and I've put out a growth rate of 10% for the next five years, being a little bit more conservative than the historical past. Um, mature margins of their free cash flow is about 12%. And a fair multiple, I think, is about 18 for a business growing at 10% per annum, but they've got some serious competitive advantages. Um, the dilution rate, even though they weren't diluting recently, they've been diluting more regularly um, recently. So I put a dilution rate here, just assuming they're gonna keep doing that. The shares outstanding number and the current market cap. And it's saying with this, these metrics, we're actually looking in five years time to make a loss based on the current price of this current market cap being 4 billion. So I don't know, maybe we can get, maybe we can play around with the revenue growth rate here. Even though I'm pretty comfortable with this being the valuation, I, I feel pretty good about this. I would say, okay, let's say it actually sits more at historical averages and they're making more deals, being a little bit more aggressive. Let's say they can pull it off 15%. I wouldn't go much higher than 15%, um, and I wouldn't change the margins, and I'd change the PE ratio potentially to something a bit higher, um, considering the gr higher growth rate, all the all the competitive advantages they have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're still looking at 15% and a high PE. We're looking at uh, what a 7% compounding growth rate. That's about so really they're somewhere around fair value right now, maybe even a little over fair value. The market cap that I would get interested at, I would much prefer to do about, I don't know, 12 growth rate and about a 20 uh, price to free cash flow. And I don't know, let's, or oh, it needs to be at least a 50% fall, maybe even further. At about here is when I'm starting to get interested to get myself a 20% compound annual growth rate. Uh, that's about a 60, 70% decline in the current price. So that's pretty extreme. Um, yeah, valuation-wise, not looking too good here for Diploma. All right, so these are things that I like about Diploma so far. They have an amazingly consistent business with a great track record. I love that. They're a scale distributor. Uh, it's a boring business, yet I think it's kind of cool at the same time. Um, that track record, again, is exceptional, which makes it easy to see what has been happening and how consistent this business is it, it helps me get a feel for the growth rate moving forward. That's why I was able to put it somewhere between 10 and 15% with quite a lot of confidence. Um, I do think their competitive position is strong. Um, being such a broad distributor really does give them a competitive advantage. Think about it in the marketplace that if you just knew you needed a particular part, you would just go wherever you think you can get it. And the, the place that you get it is gonna be Diploma like one of their subsidiaries is going to have that part because they they have that they have the widest range they have the biggest selection so you're going to check there first and i think that's a big competitive position um i think that's really interesting and i think i really like the long-term prospects of that being why diploma is so successful and probably why they've been so successful in the past i think it's for that particular thing i like the diversification of this business where they're geographically diversified but also in product range and customers they service lots of different niches i think that's cool and johnny the ceo he actually seems like a pretty rational humble guy he knows how important culture is and i like that um, culture, I think, is the most important thing. And I think he focuses on that in particular. So that's something I do like. And that's something I've picked up from listening to a couple of the investor calls. Okay, so the things I don't like are that this is not founder-led. See, Johnny was headhunted. Uh, he has a $4 million a year salary. A lot of that's in bonuses. Again, more corporate typical stuff. Don't really like to see that. Uh, he hasn't built up anywhere like any significant stake in the business. His salary is far much, far bigger than his um, ownership stake in the business. Incentives are something that I don't think are aligned at the moment. Now, I don't like that they've been paying bigger deals with equity recently, even though I don't think they need to, especially with that big dividend policy as well. 
Um, I guess 10% of the deal isn't too much, but look, the courtesy of Acquirers Club on Twitter, he put out this post in uh, from 1997, David Barber of Halmar uh, saying this, the long-term manager equally logically perceives that he is or else hopes he soon will be managing an unusually successful company. One which, for example, is making 40% returns on capital employed and is growing consistently. All common sense says that if you are fortunate enough to own such a company, then don't sell it. If that logic is true, it is equally true not to issue further shares. Why share the ownership of the gain with anyone else? Now, Halmer actually were issuing a little bit of stock, about 1-2% per annum. And Diploma are probably historically only doing the same. The thing is just recently it has stepped up and that's what I don't like to see. So I'm just a little bit nervous of that, that moving forward. But the good serial acquirers don't need to issue stock and I think that's the key here is I don't think they need to. The next thing is they've been paying up for acquisitions. So look, paying up for quality I think is totally okay. I get that. But it, I think it's just it needs to be really successful and I think it's a it's a recipe for poor results if a mistake gets made. Um, smaller, cheaper deals, I think, is a better play for a serial acquirer. Um, the occasional larger deal, I guess, is okay. It just adds a little bit more risk. And then there's, of course, the price. I just think that we're maybe a little above fair value. We're getting no margin of safety, and that's something I don't like. So I did look at some more simpler ways to value this business, and I couldn't get anywhere near it on this one. Look, it's a great business. It's a really good one to follow, and you never know. You might get some crazy bargain on this rock-solid, very good business. But and we, we all know things can get crazy in the stock market. But for me, there's just a few things that keep it off um, my radar for now. Um, I would have to watch it over a little bit more time maybe to see whether they're gonna issue more stock or anything like that. Don't really like the incentives, um, the incentive structure at the moment either. So for me, it's on the watch list. I think the business is amazing, but there's a few reasons why I don't like it. And I'm aware that that's gonna probably invite some criticism to this, but that's okay for any of you long-term diploma shareholders out there. It's a, it's a great business, you've got nothing to worry about. I'm just not going to get into it anytime soon. So there you go. That's my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed this little series on Diploma and I will see you in the next video.